the installation of a UHF Yagi antenna at your QTH place of business or amateur radio club provides calm capabilities for a variety of use case scenarios. Add to this small form factor portability and no tools assembly, and the versatility of this tool begins to grow exponentially. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Yes, I'll take a portable, I'll put it in the backyard on my portamast, but living in an HOA, I also have no problem putting it in my attic space. You know that's one of the things I'm going to do. Today on the channel, we're going to talk about the new Chameleon Antenna Tac Yagi. We have 13.7 ounces of what we've come to expect from Chameleon Premium Materials. The boom length is 17 and 3 quarter inches, while the reflector is 14 and 1 quarter. Fully collapsed, this easily fits into a protective case that I picked up on Amazon. It's about three inches in diameter. So if you install this permanently at your QTH, no need for a container like this. But if you want to take it on the go, this is one of many ways that you could protect it in a backpack or to keep it in your vehicle. The antenna is rated at 100 watts and provides gain of 7 dBi. The usable frequency range is 400 to 470 megahertz, providing utilization for MCOM and first responders. And of course, we have a usable SWR for ham radio operators, as well as those who prefer GMRS. This means we'll be able to use our familiar and favorite radios, perhaps the Anytone 878, maybe it's the TID Radio TDH3. We can bounce on over to GMRS. I've got the Allens HA1G and the newly introduced Redivis C2. That's what I'll be using for some testing later on. And you may have noticed in the shack recently a new addition, the Anytone 578. Thanks to my friends over at Bridgecom, there'll be many videos in the future on this. Net control, this is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Bob in Palm Harbor, no traffic for the net. Hi, Jen Log, thank you very much, appreciate it. Hail for up in Alice and Pasco. The coverage of 400 to 470 megahertz provides frequency agility for us to use this no tools assembly antenna in a number of radio applications. And no tools assembly is exactly what you have here. Each element is extended by gripping the bottom of the element with your palm and fingers while you put your index finger on the top and simply pull down the spring loaded element, pivoting it into place. This would be the same for all six elements. Of course, you just reverse this procedure when it's time to collapse the antenna, assuming you're using this in a portable versus permanent application. Once you get to the grip of this antenna, the top of it is a one quarter by 20 thread and it screws into the underside of the boom. The bottom of this grip is equipped with a female one quarter by 20. So you're going to want a high quality, strong one quarter 20 by three eighths by 24 adapter to be able to use this with typical amateur radio gear. So in addition to this frequency, agility, quality materials, no tools assembly, we have directionality with a Yagi antenna. We understand this in amateur radio. So let me demonstrate this just a bit. Here I am standing in a field where I'm kind of on the bottom of a slope. No huge hills here where I live in Tampa Bay, but a couple of miles from my home, I am in a bit of a dip. And my house is towards the crest of that hill and on the other side of that hill, my home is in a bit of a, a dip, a low spot. So I'm putting this Yagi in a disadvantage situation. That's how I wanted to test this. I wanted to give it some difficult things to overcome, like operating from within my attic, within my home, and here in this case, not perfect line of sight. So when I first start out, I am looking directly towards my home, and as I spin in a circle, you can hear how the signal begins to go out at my QTH, where I have set up an HT on my workstation. This is Whiskey Papa Radio Lima 305, demonstrating the directionality of the TAC Yagi antenna. Whiskey Radio Papa Lima 305. It's the first week of January. 
course, I'll want to be near you when hurricane season comes. Whiskey Radio Papa Lima, please verify the demonstration of the directionality of the pack Yagi antenna. Before we leave the topic of directionality with a Yagi antenna, let's understand what it's doing. It's concentrating radiation in a narrow beam that's aimed at the direction that we want our signal to go. And that works on both receive and transmit. So even though in this simple pragmatic illustration, you saw what happened in transmit, let's get just slightly more scientific. I'm going to use the RSSI meter, the received signal strength indicator meter on a new radio you haven't seen. No, this is not the GMRS HA1G. It's another radio just about ready to be introduced. And I'm taking my Yagi, I put it in the attic on an antenna rotator, and I'm turning the beam away from my repeater. Listen and watch what happens to the signal strength. KM4 BRQ, good evening, Tom. Uh, you're dropping out there a few times at the beginning, uh, but then the end of your transmission cleared up, it seems. So, uh, got you the log. We'll see if we have any uh, work for you to go out tonight. The gain of a Yagi antenna may also help you hit repeaters that you struggle to hit. I've had a ground plane antenna in the attic for UHF, VHF. It was my first antenna. It was my first communication with my FT991 years ago. And I always thought it was a fantastic antenna. It is a good antenna. Then I put the Yagi up there and aimed the Aggie right at the very same repeater the ground plane is communicating with. Listen to the difference between the two. I'm not suggesting that the ground plane is bad. I'm just demonstrating what gain means on a Yagi antenna. KO4 RFP, good evening, Anthony. Got a good copy on you. Uh, a little bit of crackling there might uh, be because you're mobile. But uh, uh, you mobile along safely. Uh, be safe on the road there. Watch out for critters. And uh, see you back on here in just a bit. As we look at the different features of the TAC Yagi, you begin to understand why this may be of interest of those involved in MCOM first responders. Perhaps you prefer GMRS, you don't have an amateur radio, a ham license, preparedness enthusiasts, many of whom prefer GMRS. Maybe you're going on a vacation, you want a UHF antenna, you want something you can just quickly and easily set up in a hotel room or in a rental property. For me, I think homeowners association. So if you're looking for something that's more slim and compact than a typical camera tripod, get yourself one of those super small tripods that will lay flat on your floor, add to it a single extension from Chameleon and you have a super compact installation that'll just go in the corner of a room. Aim it out the window to a local repeater, a base station, or somebody else that you're trying to communicate with who just simply has an HT in their hand. The characteristics of this antenna, which make it a great QTH antenna, whether it's in the backyard, in the attic, somewhere in your home, also make it a fantastic antenna to take with you on the go. It breaks down portable into a very small space. It's durable elements and construction make it so that it can be set up and broken down repeatedly. So perhaps it's an MCOM activity. You're providing communications for some type of recreational activity. You should be getting yourself some way, some mast, some method of getting this up in the air on the go. Here I'm taking a 3 8 by 24 stud, putting it in the base of this antenna mast, and then using the adapter to put the Takyagi handle on. I'm installing the handle first because then it's just easy to take the boom of the Takyagi and screw it on with that thumb screw. I found this to be the most effective way to pull this off. Also, your best friend when you're doing this is something like a bongo tie. You want to provide strain relief for that coax that is on the tack Yagi, so you're not constantly yanking on that coax or the fittings. Be sure to think about versatility when you're making amateur radio gear investments. Maybe you don't currently own a mast, but you have a jaw mount. I have a bike rack on the back of my truck all the time, and when it's collapsed, there's tubular structure that allows me to take this jaw clamp and use it as an antenna mast. So with the jaw clamp and the mill extension that comes with the MPAS 2.0 system, I have an antenna mast. Perhaps you have a clamp like this you can use on a picnic table or a bench in a park. 
Think about versatility with all the gear investments you make. They are investments. Invest in things that can be used in multiple circumstances in multiple ways. Of course, I can only scratch the surface when I'm providing a look at a new to market item. There are many use case applications that you would think of, but I wanna leave you with this. I can't possibly cover every technical aspect of this, and I'm not a technical guy, I'm a pragmatic guy. I'm going to tell you to go to the Chameleon Antenna Operator's Manual on this antenna. It is filled with massive amounts of useful information to be sure that if you make this investment, you'll get the most from it. Hope you found this useful, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.